few brilliant and bright men and women in Nigerian media gathered last Sunday when the former society editor of this day newspapers, Larry Alfred, released his book, Nigeria at 60, Foremost Nigerians in the Last 60 Years, had the Radisson Hotel Jerry Ikeja Lagos. The all-color, all-gloss book, which has been widely endorsed by many eminent Nigerians as a historical masterpiece worth keeping, is published by the author's old English partners, publishers of the widely popular coffee table books. Titans, the amazing exploits of Nigeria's greatest achievers and high life, lifestyles of Nigeria's rich and famous, and biographies like Pacemaker, Triumphs of Ego Sanomi at 40. The Lion of Afiancit, Triumph of Scott Tommy at 45, Julius Run, The Jewel of the Delta, and Dako Abiodun, The Heart of Prince. In his foreword, Ekiti State Governor Dr. Kayadi Fayemi wrote that Larry Alfred in the book has succeeded in taking his readers through an undulating labyrinth of the Nigerian story and points her attention to the mesh of her socio cultural polarity which ultimately makes hard a complex political experiment. In the last 60 years, what Nigeria has been for the past 60 years, that is why we're here by Akobo, Larry Afred. Speaking at the event, Afred, known for his breezy society column in this day's newspaper and his digital online platform, the Capital said that it was motivated to write the book because he realized Nigerians successfully make the error of failing to properly and periodically document in enduring forms significant events of the nation's history, data, and the roles of some people. The book, he said, would prevent the distortion of the feats and facts of Nigerian heroes and leaders. In a few days, precisely October 1st, Nigeria will turn 60. In the last six decades of statehood, Nigeria has gone through the forms of trials and troubles and occasional triumphs. While we are now nowhere near the world's lofty expectations of some of us, some Nigerians, both past and present, make being told in Nigeria what is waiting good. They are the ones who still make the outside world believe that Nigeria is not about negativity. However, one of the biggest areas of our heritage as a nation is the failure to properly and periodically document in a very form significant, significant events of our nation, national history and rules of the pathologies. Such an important document helps to prevent the distortion of the faith and facts of our heroes and leaders. Whether we want to believe it or not, Nigeria is a nation guilty of not keeping data, which has over the years led to the distortion of our history. Many of those who came before us, despite their monumental talent and achievements, refused to pass on us lessons from their trajectories. Our generation is the, is the poorer for it because many do not have a sense of where they are coming from or where they are headed. However, I made up my mind long ago that whatever it takes, I will do everything to be on the right side of history by deploying my resources, experience, and skills to document it for posterity. For today's youth, who are bereft of quality role models, the inspiring exploits and attainment of Nigeria for those citizens of the last decade. Whose contributions, whose contributions have been of immense boost to nation building. Going through the pages, the book documented in details the feats of these outstanding personalities to serve as inspiration to several youths in search of role models. Guests at the event also gave an overview of the book and the author. This guy we are talking about, what he has, uh, I think, uh, it was just uh, unfolding then, but uh, we, have not, we have not seen the best of him yet. The best is yet to come. Larry and I, we have, we've come a long way. And then uh, he's someone that, uh, that uh, chooses his friends, and then uh, his subjects very well. So what the, la the first time uh, he picked his subject was uh, when the, the first book he came out with, on uh, Captain of Industries, and then uh, so it was a total package. And then uh, the, the people that are, that are making things happen in this country, I know they still find it as a reference point. So this one, 
is coming at a very, very good time. The history of this country, the history, if you read very largely, our children and uh, those that were born before the Civil War, they don't know much about uh, the history of this country. And then, uh, and the tragedy of the youth was that uh, history, uh, at a point in the history of our nation, we stopped teaching history in our schools. But now, I think uh, we are coming back to the reality that uh, we cannot hide anyway. The history of the Civil War, now, if you read some of the books, they are being, the, the, what actually happened, what actually led to the Civil War, the story, the, the, the narratives, uh, they are coming in a different way. If you read from uh, the angle of a Yoruba man, you will understand some things. If you read from the angle of an outside man, somebody from the north, you will understand some things. If you read from the angle of uh, somebody from the south-south, then uh, you will come up with some other things again. But what I'm seeing before us today is like providing an answer to some missing links that will be very, very beneficial and then uh, our children will learn and be proud and, and be proud of their nation. Akongulari Alfred is and what he's doing. Actually, to be honest with you, I'm actually surprised that he did this. Because, um, you know, being a celebrity writer, you would expect, as has been the tradition with some of the books he's written, that he would be um, focused on um, lifestyle, people's influences, this will make things happen. But he chose um, to deviate from that line of thought concerning the book he's just published. And, um, I'm actually glad that he did this because um, most of the time, a lot of people within the uh, media circle think that when you're a celebrity writer, yeah. that's all you can do. But um, that's not the truth. We're all trained as journalists. We only just decide to focus on where we feel we can impact more. But we do have the training to be able to report whatever um, genre we choose to within the society. So I'm actually very proud to see that you've done this. Okay, she spoke about uh, the impact of mothers. Definitely, the, everyone else is sitting down here because we all came through a woman. So that should tell you how vital um, a woman is in procreation. procreation. And um, of course, I'm sure if you ask Larry, um, who has made the most impact in his life besides his wife, will be his mother. I'm not saying that the fathers are not relevant because they also play <laughs> they also play a vital role, especially when it comes to um, you know giving him that manly aspect of being a man of the house and all of that. But I always say to people that women also help in that aspect. They try to make you discover the essence of who you are as a man and as a father. They share the visions that they believe that you need to imbibe in yourself to become that vision that, that you yourself want become a reality. And so I believe that, you know, women play a vital role in that aspect. So in a lot of ways, I believe that when we even look at all the leaders that we have in the world, we are, you cannot take away from the fact that they always attribute the, the, who they are, what they've done to their mothers, who are always like there, available to have that listening ear, to be able to pray. Most importantly, pray for them daily. I mean, you wake up in the morning, you speak life into your child, you encourage your child, you make that child believe that they can conquer, they can do anything. And I believe that that's one attribute that you, Akogun, have right now. The ability to conquer, the ability to do whatever it is that you believe in your heart. Because that's what a woman will tell you, that if you believe it, just go for it. The Nigerian government has returned issue back into the Kurunkula Nigerian schools. If we don't know our past, it will be difficult to understand today and plan for tomorrow. Nigeria is our nation, whether we like it or not. I personally have traveled far and wide and I've observed one thing outside this country that living in Nigeria is the best for Nigerians. 
I've seen a lot of Nigerians outside the shore of this country suffering under the thinking that they are looking for a golden free, which is not even there. I want to congratulate Dr. Alfred for this book. Because most of Nigeria students today don't even understand their past. They didn't even know those people who formed and shaped the country Nigeria. Even if you have the present day historians, they don't even understand who are our founding fathers. So on this, I want to say thank you. Thank you that uh, you are helping history. Because with this book, a lot of Nigeria will understand that, ah, there are people, there are, there are great peoples in the past. One thing is certain. So people are talking negatively about Nigeria. Yes, there are prominent Nigerians all over the world who are actually shaping the world and making Nigeria proud. And the boys lie with those of us who are in journalism who should portray Nigeria to the outside world. I want to buttress a point that Isuza made while she was making a delivery. She said that um, as mothers, we should always speak to our child, to our children, so that whatever good things we speak to them will come out in full manifestation of what God has destined them to be. I want to also I want us to appropriate that same suggestion, that same piece of advice to our country, Nigeria. The Bible says that pray for the prosperity of Jerusalem, for they shall prosper that loves him. That has always been my own guiding line when it comes to uh, the prosperity and the success of this nation called Nigeria. We don't have any other country except Nigeria. The prosperity of Nigeria, they are prosperity as a citizen, or as Nigeria, lies in the prosperity of Nigeria. So we should always have this positive um, vibration, this positive minded, mind, positive mentality towards the development, and we shall be partakers of it. We thank God for taking us this far because we know that it's taking us further. Um, it is not strange to most people here that he's been able to achieve this. Something um, is organ at the top as said while giving her own speech. Um, she's not the only one that is proud of you. I'm also proud of you too. Now back to my expectation. Oh, seriously. Um, I really don't want to go into some negatives like um, the representative of Otsuba actually stated that we should always be encouraging people to talk positively about our country. I love this country so much, but it's so unfortunate that we're not at a place we ought to be. What would I expect in a country that has so much but is giving out so little? What else do you think I'll be expecting from that country except for it to get that um, too late to be able to stand well? Nigeria has a lot of potentials. We're blessed with good people. We're blessed with abundance, um, resources. But yet, you see, it's as if we're not always getting it right when we should. Um, I think the problem we have with Nigeria is about leadership. And I know the moment you get that right, everything will fall into place. I'm not saying those people handling us now are not trying their best. But to me, the best is not good enough. Is there any room for improvement? That's a big guess. We can still whip it back to track. 
we can, st we can still get it back um, to that railroad to get us to that desired um, place we need to be. Your work you, you just presented is qualified to, to, to pass for a PhD thesis in any of the global libraries. So I say one more time. Why should Nigeria be written about? Let's start from 19, no, let's start before 1960. Akwaku showed us a lady, the Lady Lugard. I'm not say, I'm not sure if to say she was opportuned or privileged to give us the name Nigeria. But it was that lady, and we happen to understand that she was a mistress. Yes. She gave us the name Nigeria. Um, one day, when I was rounding off my thesis, I studied in a library called the Tolkien Library, somewhere in Oxford. I'm sure most of us, some of us will know it. And I went down the basement, two floors down. I saw the tag, Nigeria history, pre-colonialism, and now. And I stumbled upon a document that says, how foundation, of course, it's, it's natural I show interest, only for me to discover that what we were told about our history is not what it is, documented by the people that gave us independence. Well, I'm not sure this is the flora for to begin to upturn or to undo what is being documented as our history. But believe me, if we look into what led to the Civil War, the Civil War, and the somewhat injustice that followed the Civil War, then most of us will agree with me that it is worthy that we should write our history. How we came about, the first elections, the coup, the, the counter coup, the NYC establishment, you know, the selfish ideas, selfish reasons that gave birth to so many injustices that we are still experiencing today. So, are they worth writing down? I think yes. Do we need to scrutinize them and exploit them so that a generation will come about that is bold enough to rewrite history and make us understand that mm -mm, that shouldn't be. This is where we are. I think so. And I think after all, you are I mean, you are setting the pace. It's it's a way to go. And um, for me, I pray for more accounts to document us. I pray for more accounts to do justice to the documentations. The book released two weeks Nigeria's 60th independence anniversary has been lauded by notable Nigerians for capturing a critical period of a nation's 60-year history, detailing unique steps, roles played by some distinguished men and women despite the force of life, harsh business climate, ethnic war and political dissension. Endorsed by the Federal Government of Nigeria through the National Council for Arts and Culture and CAC, the Director General Otumba Olusegun Nusewe said the book is of significant historical and cultural value to this generation, especially as Nigeria celebrates a 60th independence anniversary. The book is dedicated to the chairman of Globalcom Telecommunications Company, Dr. Mike Adenuga Jr., popularly known as The Bull for his relentlessness, res resilience, confidence, and humanity to mankind. We have this um, belief that Nigeria is not where it's supposed to be. The leadership seems to, seem to have failed us in a lot of respect. At least we are not where we used to be, especially in the last couple of years. Um, for some of us who believe fervently in Project Nigeria, we cannot be pessimistic, but we can be realistic. We are not where we are supposed to be. Things really are not going on well. But we have this hope that it will only get better. At 60, 
Of course, this was not where we were 60 years ago. This was not where we were 30 years ago. Um, some 25 years ago, we were under military rulership. We are under democracy now, you know, so it, things can only get better. Mr. Lange Afraid is um, a Kogun Lange Afraid, so he's my, because he's my big brother and a friend of um, several years, more than 15 years, um, we've known each other. And um, he's someone that has been, I can say, has, been, has always been very tenacious in whatever he, he set his hands to do, yeah. So um, I'm not surprised that he's coming out with um, something as um, um, commendable as this. Yes. So how would you describe the book? Have you read it? I've been opportune to look at the preview of the book and it just goes to say one thing that um, is um, taking the right step, which is to document the history of Nigeria, so to speak. You go back in time, you look at um, our nation as a country, um, you can only see some of our histories in peripheral. Don't forget the fact that he started out as a... As, um, as a society reporter. So, uh, in that wise, if you go online today to look at some of the major players in the society uh, space, in the 60s into the early 70s, 80s, early 80s, you hardly can see a lot of things to read about them. Like um, Ebenezer Obey's song, board member. Look for the man he sang about. Um, um, Sonia Olu. You hardly can see anything to read about Sonia Olu. You hardly can see a lot of things to read about Candido Darusha, who was Nigeria's first indigenous uh, millionaire. So, in documenting this is and putting it in book forms, it's like preserving the history for the people coming behind us. And it's a very, very commendable effort. So, looking at Nigeria at 60, from my independence till date, and documenting some major players, it's an archival material that will advise anybody that has a um, that takes history very seriously to have a copy and keep, not just for themselves, for the generation coming. Larry has always put his journalism into practice by publishing books. The first one he had, um, um, I can't remember the title of the book, but it was about the higher might in society. He wrote about them and put it, it was published at, it was launched at the Muson Center. And um, he's done some for like um, autobiographies for some people like um, Scott Tommy and uh, I can't remember the second person, but he's been putting his career, his journalism practice into work and turning, like, turning that into a book. Like I'm not surprised he did this because everybody here, Larry Alfred has written about them in the past, one story about them in the past. So I'm not surprised about this book. and. Um, I can't wait to flip through it. It's going to be like another my coffee book to look at when I'm doing stuff, you know. I think he's a very prolific writer. He's quite creative. And he goes out of the box as a journalist, as a newsroom journalist, not a blogger. We don't, I mean, I don't refer to people like him like bloggers. He's a very prolific journalist, quite creative, out of the box writer. And he, he has proved that outside of the mainstream journalism, you can still do well for yourself.